welcome back to the lecture series in animal physiology. So, we are into the fifth lecture of the eighth week. Last lecture, we talked about uh, hearing and uh, we talked about the hair cells present in the ear and uh, today, we will be talking about olfaction, but, but before I get into olfaction, in the field of prosthesis, there is something to do with hearing and which I wish to share with you. If say for example, all your hair cells in the ear or in the cochlea goes off or the auditory nerve is non-functional. So, there is a way you can hear it. You can interface your auditory cortex or part of the auditory nerve carrying signals from the ear to the auditory cortex with a prosthesis device which is a mic and by such an interfacing or such a neuroelectrical interfacing or hybrid interfacing one can hear and in the history of prosthesis the first very successful prosthesis was hearing prosthetic aid where people or the scientist interfaced the auditory nerves with a artificial hearing system, which is a mic through the electrode contact and it was an eight electrode configuration. So, in a way it was something like if you, I told you that these are the frequency coding which are taking place. So, for example, this whole setup is not really working the way it is, what you can do essentially, you have a hearing system, which is a electronic system, which is interfaced with auditory nerves, assuming the part of the auditory nerves are functioning and that will be interfaced with auditory cortex of the brain and most of these the very first one were eight electrode devices for hearing. So, in the history of hearing or in the history of prosthesis, this was and till this date is a landmark discovery or landmark engineering marvel, where you can bypass the sensory system and interface a gadget or a electronics to the brain and which gave birth to the whole paradigm or a concept of neuro electrical interface devices or also called bio hybrid devices, which is a very interesting area where a lot of electrical engineers, a lot of biologists, a lot of material scientists, a lot of electronics people, a lot of digital signal processing people are engaged to develop more and more prosthetic systems and uh, a similar system while we will be talking about uh, uh, vision, we will talk about the cameras which could be implanted if your retina is not working fine. But at this point, just keep this in mind which I kind of you know missed out in the last class. So, coming back, so today's class which is week 8, lecture 5, we will talk about olfaction. Olfaction or smell and in human being, this smelling parameter is not that evolved currently because we being more dependent on vision 
do not really use this smell modality for our survival instinct. We do use it, but not that much. Okay. So, but let us see how it looks like and this is very, very well developed in dogs, rats, insects and we will take a few examples how those could be utilized. So, say for example, there is an odorant molecule. Say for example, you use a perfume. Okay. So, some say aromatic aroma, I am putting aromatic compound because the name aromatic compounds came because they have a smell. Okay. So, some kind of say aromatic compound which is present there, which is coming and binding to its receptors which are present here. There are specific receptors where this aromatic compound comes and binds. Okay. So, this is the sensor system in your nose. Now, from here the signal will be ferried through a sensory neuron or through an olfactory neuron through a spinal cord to the brain. Okay, maybe it may bifurcate into two different neurons. Okay. So, this is your sensory neuron picking up the signal. Now, this will go to the olfactory lobe. In human, this is not that well developed. It is something like if you see have the brain pictures like this, spinal cord here. So, the olfactory lobes are here. These are the olfactory lobes. And if you look at it in rats or other things, these are fairly huge and very well developed. So, this info comes to the olfactory lobes. In the olfactory lobe, the processing occurs and we come to know what is this odorant all about. So, this is the basic circuit and depending on how evolved the species it, it can distinguish x number of odorant molecules. But this odorant business could be utilized for some of the applications in our day to day life and that is what we will be talking about today. But this is the basic circuit what I talked about. In our day to day life, there is you have seen something called you know we use some kind of a lotion or something which repels the insects, insect repellent or uh, some kind of when we go on tracking, we put some kind of a lotion. What are these really? So, if you look at an insect, they have these wonderful antennae sitting there and they have a three segmented three layer body something like this, head, abdomen and thorax, sorry head, thorax and abdomen. something like this okay, and the wings. So, these are the antennae or you can call them the nose of the insect. So, the odorant molecule binds here, this sends a signal to their brain. Now, say for example, you wanted to repel an insect, what will you do? So, I give you a mixture. So, say for example, this is look at the other way. You might have seen there are insects which get attracted towards certain kind of odor. Say for example, you must have seen cow dung lying down. You see a lot of insect in and around. You will see the insects kind of you know hovering or the mosquitoes hovering around part of your this part of the body like you know underarms and all these places. Why is it so? What makes them? They do not identify you by your name, right? How do they identify? How they communicate with each other? They communicate something called chemical communication. What does that mean? Chemical communication means 
they identify their target based on smell. They know that this is human smell, this is say cow or buffalo whatever or this is a flower smell or this is some say cow dung or whatever. Okay? So, there are different kind of smells. So, these process, these antennae, one point, so they have say for example, multiple receptors and I am showing the receptors in different colors. For simplicity's sake, we concentrate with five different colors, assuming there are five different possibilities which are there. Five different molecules can bind, but how we could create combinations out of it? Now, suppose there are five different odorant molecules which can bound and name them as blue, green, red, pink and light blue. Now, each one of them are function of quantity and quality or type or type. So, in this case type is already defined that is blue, right. It is a blue type. It could be anything, it could be x, y, z aromatic molecule, but the quantity, this is very important to understand. Why it is very important? Say for example, all of us use perfume, all of us uses deodorant. If you use excess, you just feel, you know, very uneasy at times or suppose you are in a party and somebody passes by having a very thick deodorant smell or a very thick perfume smell, you just get kind of some of us kind of gets like, you know, man, that is too, too much. So, it means, whereas the same perfume or a deodorant at a low, lesser concentration may be very soothing. So, that is what it meant by quantitative computation. So, the quantity of that particular odorant binding decides whether this will act as a repellent or as an attractant. So, in other words, there is nothing called in the known literature of smell, there is nothing called absolute repellent or absolute attractant. It is always somewhere in between. There is absolutely, absolutely nothing absolute about this whole thing. This is the first take home message what I wanted to give you, that there is nothing called absolute. Now, having said this, Say for example, at one point, you get a combination of all the five. So, for example, uh, odor is a mix of all the five. But now, how you can distinguish that if another odor comes, say odor one, having all the five elements, dark blue, light blue, pink, red, green, odor two, again all the five elements. One, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. This, 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 this one also. But then how you could distinguish between order one and order two? You can distinguish order one and order two depending on if this is the quality it is telling that they have this type. What is the quantity? Because varying any of this quantity, say for example, I vary the fourth one, say the red one, the whole complexion is going to change because the signal what will be propagated from here to the brain will be different than if this red one is more here or red one is less here. Apart from here we are considering all the five components are there. So, imagine if this total number of thing, this becomes say, you know, I can identify say 10,000 individual odor molecule, what all possible combinations one can do? The combination can be unfathomable. That is how far one can do. And as a matter of fact, 
the whole world perfume industry. France, India, some of the rich places, especially uh, very close to IIT Kanpur, there is a place called Kanauj, which is famous for exporting the best quality of perfume all over the world. This whole industry rolls on this olfactory physiology. What do you smell? I mean, what kind of smell? So, essentially, it all boils down into the word what I mentioned, chemical communication and chemical senses. Okay? And in the same line, you must have seen the small ants following each other like this. This is also that chemical senses or chemical communication, where each one of these, the one which is ahead of the other, secrete certain chemical which is being responded by the second one. This one secretes something which is responded by the third one likewise and they move in a trail like this. These are some of the very interesting areas which covers from human physiology to insect physiology and they have few others very commercial agricultural applications. Those commercial agricultural applications includes developing insect repellent for crops because you are using the basic physiology, okay? Insect repellent for crops or developing insect repellent for vector borne pathogen. So, vector borne pathogen are something like malaria where the insect is carrying the pathogen and if you have a way you can repel that vector, you can you know prevent that disease to occur in a particular area. First of all, of course, you have to prevent their breeding and you have to ensure that they are not approaching that area somewhere or other. So, there are several interesting areas which have developed by understanding the olfactory biology over the years and not only that, we have series of olfactory memories. Particular smell help you to associate with a particular event at a particular time because most of these smells or chemical senses get stored at different parts of the brain in a different fashion. Okay? So, there are traces and based on that, you can even identify an individual. So, say for example, what I meant by that, there is an associativeness. Associativeness means, say for example, somebody put on a perfume. Suppose your respective boyfriend or girlfriend has a particular perfume. Now, he or she puts on that particular perfume on a XYZ date. You smell that but somewhere else. That individual is not there in front of you, right? You smell that and the face will appear in front of you. You will ah, okay, I know this smell. Okay. So, in other words, uh, visual information, say for example, can cross talk with an olfactory information. Not only that, to auditory information. Now, you realize the complexity. So, when we talked about memory, I told you, one information could be split up into different component, a visual component, a olfactory component, a auditory component, likewise, so on and so forth. So, it is a big function of one particular whole set of information. Now, what body did, did D, dx by dy, one component, dx prime by dy prime, second component likewise. The different component of differentiating the signal and when you have to recollect the whole thing, what you do? You do an integral of this whole thing, of these different functions. So, in, inherently, if you look at the nervous system, it is all about integral and 
differentials of signals. This is how the whole system, whether send we talk about olfaction, whether you talk about memory acquisition, whether you talk about vision, whatever modality you pick up. I'll leave the modality for your wisdom. But what I want you is to think slightly beyond the scope of the textbook, that how information coding is so very critical. How, I mean, think of a stuff, a dog just by sniffing can figure out this is a stranger, the other person is a person of the house. So, in other words, if nature has done that, nature could also be cheated. This is one project I will share with you. Say, for example, we talk about insect, we talk about repellent. Say, for example, I talk about insect attractant. So, insect gets attracted by, say, I know this insect X is insect X is kind of, you know, damaging to the crop. Now, I have a molecule, say, Y, which is an attractant. But I know this molecule Y is derived from the plant, which is attracting it. Plant give out this molecule Y and the X get attracted. So, whenever this plant is flowering or whatever it is doing, forming seed, it sends out that particular molecule Y and the insect comes and destroys the plant. Fair enough, no issues. Now, what I do is, I am human very clever, shrewd and a big cheater. What I do then, I have this box, I know this molecule Y, I synthetically make a lot of Y or I collect a lot of Y's from here. Now, what will happen? Now, if I know that this insect is exclusively attracted by the odorant, not by the visual cue. So, there are two options you have to realize. Either the insect knows that this particular tree is or the plant tree or the herb is now in a flowering stage. So, I get a visual cue and I am going to run towards it or it is exclusively depending on the odorant or both. How you answer that question? So, you can have a box from where this odorant molecule will be coming out. If it is exclusively dependent on this, you will see the insect flocking in towards it. And if you could make this structure like those flower, artificial flower from where it is coming out, then you can even distinguish if the number of flocking insect is more here, it means it is using the visual as well as the olfactory clue. V stands for visual, O stands for olfactory cue. So, these are some of the very interesting questions what now several scientists across the world are trying to address how we can, you know, do things in a very natural way. In other words, the doing it by biomimetics way. You are mimicking nature, natural mimetics, okay. So, I will close in the olfaction here and next class we will go to the visual uh, system and then the sympathetic and parasympathetic before moving into the cardiac system. Thank you.